We're getting some absolute bombshell reveals from the FTC hearing on the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard, revealing all kinds of juicy details about in-development games and grievances among the major consoles that we normally don't get to hear that much about. And perhaps most pertinent to this channel, if you are excited for Elder Scrolls 6, the upcoming RPG from Bethesda, you're going to be really, really fucking disappointed with the announcement that we have here today. It's not coming soon, and it may not even be coming on this generation of consoles. But we do have a date. We'll start with perhaps the most petty move. Sony has stated that they won't share any details about the PlayStation 6 with Activision Blizzard if Microsoft's purchase goes through. In a move that would almost certainly backfire on Sony should they do this as they would be unable to launch titles like Call of Duty at launch, it's hard to say if their concerns of sensitive information being shared with a direct competitor are warranted, or if this is just another way they're trying to kill the deal. It's not like Activision can really back out now anyway, so this looks like a show put on for the FTC. Speaking of Sony, Phil Spencer confirmed in court that Starfield might have actually been a PlayStation 5 exclusive, if Microsoft hadn't purchased ZeniMax. They were concerned after Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop were both made PlayStation 5 exclusives, figuring, and perhaps rightly so, that Starfield would be next. In fact, there were actually rumors that this was the way that it was going early on, of course before the purchase happened. In this testimony, it was also confirmed that Sony had signed Square Enix to an exclusive deal to keep Final Fantasy XVI a PS5 console exclusive. A trend Spencer said was on par for the course as they tried to secure content for their console against the market leader, Sony. Buying ZeniMax by their own words was essential to them to remain viable in the business. And yes, that is also part of Microsoft admitting that they have really pretty badly lost the console wars. And now we actually have some numbers. Speaking under oath, they have confirmed that they are firmly in third place behind Sony and Nintendo since Xbox's launch 20 years ago. The document submitted to the court said that when Xbox launched in 2001, it was significantly outsold by both Sony and Nintendo, and it hasn't stopped losing the console wars since. They redacted the shares for Sony and Nintendo, but stated that for 2021, Xbox had shares of 16% for sales with an installed base of 21%, both behind the other two platforms. In a game that I'm concerned about because it's an IP port and I'm always a little worried about that, the AAA Indiana Jones game, which was originally announced in 2021, coming from Machine Games, was originally set for multi-platform release, but was changed after the acquisition of ZeniMax. The deal was amended to release it on PC and Xbox, and it's currently set to hit Game Pass on day one. It was also revealed that part of the move was at least in part influenced by Lucasfilm and the fact that it was a licensed game. But there's also some not so great things going on here with Blizzard Activision. Bobby Kotick apparently demanded a higher revenue share than the standard from Xbox for Call of Duty and almost decided to not put Call of Duty on Xbox. So it sounds like there actually was potential for a Call of Duty being a console exclusive, but it wasn't actually going to be for Xbox. It was going to be for PlayStation. And now we get to the most devastating news. The the news of the Elder Scrolls release date. It was confirmed under oath that Elder Scrolls 6 is still over five years away, meaning that the release date for Elder Scrolls 6 is 2028 at the earliest. <laughs> That's pretty extraordinary when you take into account that Skyrim released in 2011 and Oblivion launched in 2006. But there's a very interesting tie in here to our next point. Microsoft expects the next generation of consoles to come out in, yeah, you guessed it, 2028. Could this mean that they're working on Elder Scrolls 6 for that next generation of consoles? And granted, we're probably still in the design phase for Elder Scrolls 6, which begs the question, why the f did they do a teaser for it in 2018? Something that really kind of gets under my skin when I think about it, because that was two years before the launch of this generation of consoles, and 10 years before perhaps the earliest release date. Announcing a game before the next generation of consoles and skipping that console generation is really frustrating. 
It's a bold move. I would say it's a stupid move, but I know for me, I'm going to play the hell out of Elder Scrolls 6 as soon as it launches. You know, I they've 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 con they have me convinced just with their past games, so I don't really know <laughs> how much they could mess it up, except this, except this one thing. Starfield, the game that is launching soon and was potentially going to be a Sony exclusive before ZeniMax was purchased. Well, that team, the team that's been working on Starfield, they're the team that's going to be working on Elder Scrolls 6. It wasn't clear from the way that I was reading things if there has been some work going on already or if they were just completely focused on Starfield, finishing that game up before moving on to Elder Scrolls 6. There was more that was revealed, like things like Minecraft not being on PS5 and stuff like that, and why, and, and some little pettiness going on between the two companies. And I'm sure we'll get more pettiness as the week goes on because there are still two more days of the trial, potentially three more days of the trial as the, this whole thing wraps up. It's an interesting trial here because if this trial does not go the way that Microsoft wants it to go and it goes in favor of the FTC, this could be the end of the merger. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope it's not too sad and upsetting that if you don't already have gray hair by the time Elder Scrolls 6 launches, you probably will. I definitely will. Thank you so much.